Ta prati ke parado sa frinde ke balakoshia ta branda kosia. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Your name is to be Lord. One more time. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Give me a destiny-altering encounter tonight. Go ahead and pray. Let my life shift in the name of Jesus. Radically transform my life by the power of your word. Someone pray. You are going from strength to strength tonight. You are stepping into another dimension of grace tonight. Shalige de barakatosh kata prande ge balakatosh afregedes imbra kata barados kate balakatosh kata prande ge baratos yata speak to our hearts dear lord shabrande ge barakatosh kaliada branda ga baros kadea can you pray in the spirit for one minute to charge and open up your hearts to hear and receive shabres kate belega de prato kash kata bata kata prande ge de belega tosh Imbra kata kata prande kata lo shata frakata bada katos. Mighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ, touch my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. Touch my body, my soul, my spirit, breathe on me. You are the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. You are the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we are here again tonight. We have come to learn. We have come to grow. We have come to encounter your wisdom and to encounter grace. Take us to heights unimagined tonight. May your word come with fire and may it transform our lives. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. You're welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. All those who are connecting with us, Azaria family and our global family, we thank you. And I pray that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. While I sat back there, the Lord just ministered something to my heart and i thought to just encourage us listen i give you a guarantee in the name of jesus christ that if you listen to what you are learning week after week and you submit yourself truly to the truth that is being communicated here i give you a guarantee by the authority of scripture that your life will be a sign and a wonder first to you and then to everybody around you hallelujah we are made in this kingdom out of the abundance of the mysteries of the kingdom we have access to hallelujah and it is the assignment of the shepherds to build to mature god's people according to jeremiah 3 and verse 15 i will give you pastors 
or shepherds according to my heart the bible says they shall feed you so what you are receiving is feeding it's more than an information that is entering your ears it's an information that is entering your spirit and framing your reality hallelujah they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding hallelujah tonight the word of god is coming with power to purge and build us i've prayed earnestly for tonight's teaching it is a teaching for the body of christ and i want you to please listen do not allow yourself to be distracted tonight listen from start to finish because i believe that this is one of those teachings tonight that you will praise god for and it will build your capacity in the spirit for a very long time in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i'm teaching on the purified church the purified church tonight god is coming to us as a refiner's fire to build us and to give us capacity and stamina even in the spirit the purified church god is going to be commending us he's going to be challenging us and the word of god is going to be building us in the name of jesus hallelujah i want to start this teaching tonight with three very important information number one jesus is coming back and he's coming back soon that is the first information you would be surprised that many people have forgotten this thing i just said jesus is coming back and he's coming soon revelations 1 and verse 7 please let's hurry up we have a lot to cover tonight behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him even so amen so the bible tells us assuredly that jesus christ is returning is one of the cardinal pillars of the christian faith the imminent return of jesus you are not a complete christian if you do not believe that Jesus is coming it's not enough to believe he came the first time it's not enough to believe that he died you must believe that he's coming again revelations 22 verse 12 then we go to verse 20 the Bible says and behold I come quickly Jesus himself is speaking and my reward is with me to give every man according as his works shall be verse 20 he which testified this thing said surely i come quickly amen even so come lord jesus last scripture to establish that point acts chapter 1 from verse 10 to 11 this is jesus being lifted to the heavens and the bible says while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel uh-huh 11 which also said ye men of galilee why stand ye gazing into heaven this same jesus now not another one this same jesus which is taken up from you into heaven he shall come in like manner in like manner means the way you saw him go up that is the way he's going to come back the way nothing resisted him from going up that is the same way nothing will resist him from coming back are we together so fact number one for tonight's teaching is that Jesus is coming back and he is coming soon. Fact number two, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 26 to 27. There is a kind of church and a kind of bride that he is coming back for. The Bible says that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. 27 please. It says that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish so he's coming fact number one fact number two he's just not coming for any kind of person there is a kind of church there is a kind of believer he's coming for are we clear on that number three it is the assignment of the fivefold ministry to help build 
and mature the body of Christ to be efficient even as we await his coming. It is the assignment of the fivefold, the fivefold ministry now, to help build and mature the body to be efficient even as we await his coming. You find that in Ephesians chapter 4 from 11 to 16. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. Uh -huh. It says for the perfecting, the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Next verse. Till we come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, the Bible says, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 14. It says that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, wherein they lie to deceive. Next verse. It says, but speaking the truth in love, we may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. The last verse now. It says, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. So, that Jesus is coming again. He's coming back and he's coming soon. Number two, that he's coming for a kind of church. And the Bible says that church as a bride should be without spot or wrinkle. And then the next verse, it is the mandate. That means anyone who is truly called by God to function within the scope of the fivefold, contained in your strategy for building believers, must be a template, a teaching, resources that help the body to become in experience that purified bride, that purified church. Are we together? Hallelujah. Now, the next thing I want you to know, I'm rushing because there is a lot for us to cover. The next thing I want you to know is that the way, listen carefully, the way the Lord purifies and matures his church is by commendation and correction. The way that the Lord purifies and matures his church is by a blend of commendation and correction. When God builds and purifies his bride, he does it by commending the bride and commending the church where they do well and get it right and then correcting and pointing areas to them that they need to make adjustments in philippians chapter 3 and verse 11 we see this strategy used in the ministry of paul 3 and 11. hallelujah i hope i got that right give us Yes, let's, let's start from verse 11. Let's see, I hope that's it. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Oh no. Please search for that scripture. I thank my God in remembrance of you. That's the scripture I'm looking for. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 5. Hebrews chapter 12. Okay, beautiful. He, uh, Philippians 1 and verse 3. Now watch this. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Verse 4, it says, always in prayer of mine for you, making requests with joy, uh -huh, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Apostle Paul is commending the church now. Verse 6, being confident of this very thing, he said, that we, he which had begun a good work, what kind of work? A good work in you, he said, he will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. You can stop there. So Paul is commending them and he's saying that every time he remembers them, he's blessing God for them because that they are walking in truth and that he is confident that that which is commended unto God that he's able to keep. He's expressing joy and commendation. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 11. Same Paul, Hebrews 12. The Bible says, 
now no chastening for the present from verse 5 please 5 to 11 5 to 11 it says and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children my son despise not the chastening of the lord someone say the chastening of the lord nor faint when thou art rebuked the word faint there is don't be discouraged he's encouraging you that in your journey in your walk with god there are times he will correct he will rebuke you that when that happens do not take offense in it it is part of his structure for maturing you is someone learning now it says nor faint when thou art rebuked of him aha uh -huh, we're reading to 11. it says for whom the lord loveth he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth that means the chasing of the of the lord is a sign of acceptance that he loves you and he wants you to stand to last to finish strong he said if ye endure chastening god dealeth with you as with sons for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not he's asking a question verse 8 reading to 11 but if ye be without chastisement whereof all are partakers then are ye bastards the word bastard there is not an insult it means you are one who is not under the mentorship of a father it's as though there is nobody who builds you who shapes you he says and you are not sons verse 9 furthermore we have had fathers in our flesh corrected us which corrected us and we gave them reverence shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the father of spirits and leave verse 10 for they verily for a few days chasteneth it us after their own pleasure but he for our profit so chastening is for your profit that we might be partakers of his holiness the last verse please it says now no chastening for the present seemed to be joyous but grievous nevertheless afterwards it yielded the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby are we together so we see that in paul's apostolic ministry he helped the church get matured not only by teaching them the mysteries of the kingdom but he was very careful to watch over them and to commend them where commendation was needed and to chastise or to correct them where chastisement was needed in revelation chapter 2 please give us from verse 1 John was caught up in the Isle of Patmos and he had an encounter with Jesus, the resurrected Christ, now in his glorified state. And he was asked to write a letter to the seven churches. Now, theologically speaking, there were seven churches in Asia Minor, but it was a prophetic representation of the entire church. Are we together? We are going to take just two of the churches to study the character of how God purifies his church. Are we together? unto the angel of the church in ephesus right this thing saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candles next verse i know thy works now are you seeing now i know thy works and thy labor and thy patience how and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and has found them liars we're reading to 11 let's hurry up media and has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted are you seeing that he started by commending them that listen i am not unaware of your sacrifice i see your diligence and everything that you do for the kingdom then he says nevertheless I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left your first love. Remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto you quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place except you repent. Verse 6. It says, but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate seven he that hath an ear he says let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches to him that overcometh i will give to eat of the tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of god 
now he goes to the next church the church in smyrna he says these things say it the first and the last which was dead and is alive verse 9 i know thy works and tribulation and poverty but thou art rich and i know the blasphemy of them which say they are jews and are not but are of the synagogues of satan so he commends them now he says fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer behold the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried and ye shall have tribulation 10 days he says be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life the last verse verse 11 he says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches and he that overcometh shall not be hurt by the second death are we together now so you see that the character of jesus christ in dealing with the church is that he would commend appropriately and then he would correct please look up this already is a template for every man of God and every leader to use in dealing with people. That means when you want to build and mature people, please let me have your attention. The first thing is that you must be lavish to correct them, but you must also be very lavish to commend them. When your ministry and your mentorship structure is only full of commendation and commendation, you are going to raise a people that are weak and will not sustain power and stamina. Your, your vision, your ministry, your organization will be full of flattery and lies. But then on the flip side of it, if your ministry is all about judgment and correction and rebuke and pointing fingers at people, you are going to produce a discouraged people. Are we together now? Because when you stretch the human spirit beyond certain boundaries, they become discouraged. There are parents today who have produced, in quote, what we call spoiled children. And the way they did that was by living a life that is full of commendation with no structure for improvement and rebuke. Whether the child is good or bad, that's it. They just love like that. And then there are those who, pro who produce children who are full of bitterness and offense and anger because their entire lives, even when the children were given their very best, it seemed like the best was never enough. So good mentorship, therefore, and that which makes for maturity and stature must be a healthy blend, are we learning already, of commendation and any ministry that focuses on just commendation without building and maturing the saints and chastising them if and when the need arises will produce a lopsided and a very weak believer but then any ministry that is full of judgment and pointing fingers and leadership also you will not be able to produce a mature people so in dealing with this very sensitive subject of the purified church it is important for us to understand that to get it right we must adopt the template that was used by the apostle and the template that was used by jesus himself according to ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1 it says we should be imitators of god be imitators of god some versions say be followers of god as their children that means as you have seen him do and act do likewise in uh, first peter chapter 2 and 21 i believe it says we should follow in his steps the last sentence it says that we should follow in his steps that means the way he made the church matured is the way we can make the church within our territory matured by a healthy combination of commendation and then chastisement and rebuke hallelujah praise the name of the lord now while this message concerns the church universal the global church uh, my focus particularly is for the church in africa and then the church in nigeria hallelujah we owe it to contribute to the maturity and the purification of the church within our territory now the church in nigeria the church in africa has contributed in many many ways we thank god for the privilege 
of the many things that the church has done among them the church in nigeria and even in africa in many regards have been um the trailblazers in terms of revival across the nations god himself by his spirit has raised fathers even within this nation many of us grew up in the midst of seasons of strategic revivals there were great people like reinhard bonke of late great people who came into this nation and across the african continent because of the presence of these people men like archbishop um uh, idahosa hallelujah benson idahosa these people spearheaded very tremendous levels of revival the church has also done well worthy of commendation in terms of sacrifice i can tell you like you know that the church in africa and the church in nigeria is truly a church of sacrifice hallelujah sacrifice always in terms of giving in terms of many churches in this country for instance hold multiple services and there are people who are there from start to finish that is tremendous sacrifice it is not a usual occurrence in many parts of the world in koinonia here for instance there are people who are here very early in the morning and would stay late into the morning until everything is done that is sacrifice and that is worthy of commendation number three the church in nigeria africa and it extends to the church global is noted for compassion compassion that truly we are a people of compassion the gentleman who gave his testimony here can you imagine meeting someone for the first time and just telling the person that i am a member of koinonia what if he was lying he didn't even check to verify carried money to give him now the gentleman has a job there are people who went to school because of the church is that true there are people who had the opportunity to rise and live responsible lives because of the church so worthy of commendation is the compassion of the church worthy of commendation also is doctrine by the grace of god the church in nigeria and it extends to many parts of africa has been a place of doctrine nigeria does not have a problem with ignorance no ignorance in spiritual matters for any believer in nigeria today is purely a product of laziness because god has raised people across the body are we together to be able to bring there is a minimum level of spiritual understanding that an average believer who is interested in god should attain worthy of commendation for the church in nigeria the church in africa is standing for truth and righteousness in the face of hardship and death this is most prominent across the northeast you would hear of stories of pastors and people who were given an opportunity either to renounce jesus and they stood even to the face of death many of these you may not see it on air but worthy of commendation is the stamina and the sacrifice of god's people many people have given up riches given up opportunities to be famous simply because they made up their minds that they would stand for truth is that correct worthy of commendation also is the profound dimension of kingdom influence that god has given his church within this nation across africa and also the world god has lifted and honored the church you can imagine churches in nigeria having universities hospitals there are many people who would have died today except for the influence of the church god has honored the church to be a global force right from nigeria here and then parts of africa and up to the world so it is worthy of commendation finally worthy of commendation is the tremendous display of spiritual power and the gifts of the spirit that has been invested in the church in this country in the church in africa you know i sat back there watching people come and give all these testimonies and sometimes media will capture the emotions of the people and i just nod my head and even me myself who god used to produce the miracles i am i wouldn't really say i'm amazed but i'm humbled that god can raise somebody out of nothing and invest such level of spiritual power i can tell you that the church in nigeria 
truly has spiritual power. The church in Africa has spiritual power. Forget about some of the challenges here and there. Profound power. There are people who left home on wheelchairs and returned back carrying their wheelchairs and rejoicing. Genuine, authentic miracles. There are people who in a moment, a twinkling of an eye, their lives change like night and day. All because of the tremendous power. Is it the prophetic? Is it the revelatory grace? All kinds of graces invested within the body. So before we now begin to check some of the things that need to be corrected, it is worthy of note that we salute the body of Christ and salute the church. That includes every man, every woman who serves God in truth. That includes every kingdom leader in politics, in business. That includes every father producing responsible children, mother producing responsible children, every captain of industry, all together, provided it is a contribution that has brought these commendations about the church then we deserve to at least give ourselves a little pat in the back to say well done is that true now having brought that commendation my emphasis tonight is the lord gave me this revelation to reveal seven deadly sins that must be purged from the church the church universal the church in africa and the church in nigeria as much as we have commended ourselves it is important for us to be honest enough to allow that refiner's fire to pass through us and to bring that purging in john chapter 15 he says he that bears fruit my father will prune so that he will bear much he will bear greater fruit he that bears fruit when you bear fruit they prune you so that you will even produce greater fruit hallelujah now i want you to listen to these seven i call them seven deadly sins that must be purged from the church this teaching tonight is not from a standpoint of self-righteousness for we are all but products of his mercy are we together the teaching tonight is an attempt to show us through the lens of the holiness and the purity of the Christ, the areas that we need to adjust in our lives, in our organizations to the point that we present a bride and a church that is purified. So as I take on this, I want you to listen very carefully to any one of the seven. And as the Holy Spirit speaks to you, as I run through this list, now I'm going to bring some of the challenges and then I will prefer very quickly what is the biblical solution out of them are you ready now sin number one sexual immorality and related perversions sexual immorality please write and related perversions we'll talk about the related perversions now first thessalonians chapter four three to five the first sin that needs to be purified from the body of Christ. Give us amplified. Let's read amplified, then we'll read Acts 15, 28 and 29. For this is the will of God, that you should be consecrated, separated and set apart for pure and holy living, that you should abstain and shrink from all sexual vice. We're reading to five that each of you should know how to possess control or manage his own body in consecration purity separated from things profane and honor uh -huh. verse 5 the last verse not to be used in the passion of lust like the hidden who are ignorant of the true god and have no knowledge of his will give us acts chapter 15 please from verse 28 and 29 amplified still for it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us not to lay upon you any greater burden than this indispensable requirement. Uh -huh. That you abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols and from tasting blood and from eating the meat of animals that have been strangled and from sexual impurity. If you keep yourselves from these things, it says ye do well. Hallelujah. Now, please, I want you to listen very carefully. Sexual immorality from time immemorial has been part of society 
and it extends to all the organizations and even the individuals i want you to pay attention to this sexual immorality is predicated on certain facts that you must know please pay attention the first thing you need to know is that the desire for intimacy i wrote here is not demonic most people have not studied this subject i have taken the time to study this issue of sexual immorality the desire for intimacy is not demonic now that is the problem with this issue of lust and immorality because other negative vices like lying and stealing any day any time lying is lying and it is bad any day any time please look up stealing is stealing and it is bad but when it comes to the issue of sexual immorality the intrinsic desire for intimacy was not put there by the devil it was put there by God so it's not a desire you can cast out of your life are we together it is only a desire that was created to be expressed within certain conditions it is the presence or absence of the conditions that make it right or wrong not the presence of the desire is someone learning now that what can be a dangerous thing right now the next moment within the right condition of marriage can become the greatest blessing or one of the greatest blessing are we together stealing is stealing lying is lying for instance but when it has to do with the issue of sexual immorality you have to understand that it was god that put the desire for intimacy in men hallelujah this is very important and if you do not understand this you are going to be fighting a battle that you do not even understand write this down the spirit of lust and immorality or the nature of lust and immorality is that it capitalizes it capitalizes on this blessing that god has put within men and perverts it to the destruction of the victims so it capitalizes on the presence of this desire that god has put in men and now perverts it for their destruction if you're with me say amen now sexual immorality does not care whether you are old does not care whether you are young does not care whether you are an apostle whether you are a prophet whether you are good or bad sexual immorality is not about being good or evil it's about exploiting not a weakness exploiting a provision that was put by god and if not guarded within the frame of what i will teach you you can be a nice person you can be an evil person and from a sexual standpoint you will be victims of the same thing are we learning now this is very very powerful it is a cancer that has destroyed society destroyed great destinies it is a cancer that has destroyed people from ministry to business to politics noble people have crashed down sometimes overnight because of this like i said the goal is to expose us to it not from a standpoint of condemnation but to give us enlightenment and to supply us with the tools that will keep us strong are we together let me tell you this no man will ever outgrow the temptation of sexual immorality no man will outgrow being tempted that that is that is the point the devil will come once and again for as long as you are alive because he knows that 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 nature is in every man that desire that god put so satan will be up and doing creating scenarios and creating any and everything that will exploit that provision and for one who is ignorant and not equipped with scripture and with revelation eventually you will be a victim is someone learning it is a spirit i i in in researching for this i came towards some statistics i don't even want to go and talk about right now very 
terrible statistics that are not very very friendly and not very funny but then I studied something in dealing with this subject do you know that speaking within the context of sexual immorality the way this spirit works is that once you are a young and unmarried person the devil the spirit of loss acts by amplifying to an unusual degree are we together this desire that God put generally everything God gives man he gives you power and control over whatever seems to go beyond your control has been empowered by another spirit are we together now so the way the devil pushes once you are unmarried without a spouse he will amplify to an unusual degree and I, there may be biological explanations i don't downplay you know research of medicine we're not discussing medicine now this is from a spiritual standpoint i know there are things like hormonal imbalance and the rest i don't want to go into those discussions are we together but that generally speaking he will amplify that desire beyond the control of an individual and if not protected by wisdom revelation and some of these keys i will show you you will find out that you will be a victim and then the moment you get married he will now flip flip the uh, the side of the coin by taking away that desire so you find out that you can see two people who sometimes are in a hurry to get married because they think they don't they want to keep themselves and then they get married statistics will tell us counselors and even men of god will tell you that sometimes once it happens you find out that that desire seems to just evaporate and vanish it is all the structure of this spirit is someone learning now very very important now beyond just sexual immorality there are other expressions of immorality pornography masturbation all kinds of perversions sexual immorality may be the major issue but there are many others you see the thing about the thing about sexual immorality is that it is it requires a number of conditions for that to happen number one it is atmosphere dependent number two you will need the mutual consent of the parties involved but for things like pornography and masturbation these things do not need this all these extra things so there are many people who for some reason have been able to survive sexual immorality but pornography masturbation and a lot of other bodily vices do you know the bible says a man that looks at a woman to lust after her in the mind of the spirit he has already committed immorality so there are others who may not physically act it out but as far as god is concerned they are victims because it is a state of perpetual emotional entertainment just like sexual immorality pornography masturbation and so on it does not care whether you are a man of god it does not care whether you are married it does not care whether you are single it does not care whether you are young it does not care whether you are old if left unchecked it will attack and wreck your life is someone learning now scene number one sexual immorality and related perversions there are other expressions of immorality is still under the group of immorality drunkenness drugs every kind of harm that is inflicted in the body that is inconsistent with god's pattern are we together so there are some who will say well i'm not sexually immoral but then there are people who are victims of drugs victims of alcoholism victims of all kinds of vices that's why it's written here sexual immorality and related perversions i need not mention other extreme ones unfortunately but it is true in the world and i hope and pray not the church extensions of extreme cases like having affairs with little children and babies and animals and sodomy you know that our world today is full of all kinds of things the goal is not condemnation the goal is to be able to expose this and to bring us to a point where we become free and free indeed because i can tell you many people are not free 
are we together very quickly so that we'll deal with the other things i want to give you five steps five scriptural steps to be free from sexual immorality and every related perversion and i want you to please listen and learn for yourself and for anybody god may give you the privilege of helping are we together number one for you to be free from lust and immorality the first thing that must happen to you is that you must admit it psalms 51 and verse 17 brokenness is a necessary requirement if you are going to experience the salvation of god on this wise it says the sacrifices of god i hope you know psalms 51 was the psalm of david when prophet nathan came to him and to tell him what had happened to him he was broken repented crying with sackcloth and ashes and this was part of his contemplations it says the sacrifices of god are a broken spirit a broken and a contrite heart oh god thou will not despise admit it you must come to that point where you admit it listen let me tell you the truth by the privilege of god's grace i can tell you I have cried with and prayed with many people and do you know there are many people you see who are victims of sexual immorality and on further examining they have very sincere hearts some of them grew up from families where the first place they had that that was wrong was even in church because it was a common practice there are cultures that promote it as part of the cultural activities is that true so it is very difficult that's why in dealing with people you must never throw away the place of compassion and mercy there are people who were left they grew up on their own and by themselves they became victims of sexual exposures even before teenage some were victims from those they grew up under that trusted them now there's no point bringing sad memories but the point is that for you to be free from lust and sexual immorality and any expression of it you must get to a point of admittance that i need help my life needs the mercy of god step number two very quickly if you're learning say amen, amen. step number two you must set aside time for a retreat as soon as possible set aside time for a retreat a retreat gives you the platform to pray to study scripture to fast and to be broken and repentant before god your maker can i tell you this i think it was i can't remember the man of god now I was listening to years ago and he said any weakness unaddressed will eventually bring you down it is not the weakness it is leaving it and assuming there is no problem is someone learning now you must set aside time for a retreat a retreat is a time alone with god can i tell you when you are dealing with something this cancerous nothing should be too important you can't say i am too busy because this sustains the potential i'm going to tell you the, do you know the assignment of sexual immorality i will tell you the assignment of sexual immorality is not is not the sex that destroys you there is something it does to you spiritually when the devil wants to attack you there is a a, a threshold level of spiritual fire that if you possess it cannot allow for a demonic attack and so the way that it happens is to introduce this to your life and it begins to bring you down to a level spiritually where an attack upon your life any dimension becomes possible are we together one of the things it may interest you to know is that there is a strong relationship between the spirit of immorality and the spirit of untimely death there is a strong relationship so number one admit it with humility and brokenness crying to the god of your salvation number two a retreat is your next port of call a sincere time alone with god to cry out your heart before your maker
in prayer, in fasting, in genuine repentance. When Jonah went to Nineveh and announced to them the imminent destruction that was coming upon them, the Bible says immediately the king of Nineveh declared a fast. Everyone fasted till the animals and all of them wore sackcloths and ashes and cried before God. The thing about God is the moment there is brokenness, his mercy is ready to come. Is someone learning? Let me recommend a scripture for you that you use for your retreat, Psalm 51. The whole of Psalm 51 is the Psalm of mercy. This was the cry, the pouring out. He said, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression. And then he says in verse 2, wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 3. It says, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Verse 4. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5. It says, Behold, I was shaping in iniquity. Look at the psalmist pouring his heart before God and saying, Listen, this, uh, this was a tendency that has been fighting me for many years. He couldn't find expression because I was not yet king. Can I tell you? You need to cry for God's mercy because there are many people who are not victims of this. Not because the devil is not attacking you. The opportunity that gives you room to execute it has not yet come. And the spirit of loss can lie quietly for decades, waiting for the day you are exalted. I can tell you what came upon David did not come upon him in the palace. It was there right from when he was in the bush. Who will come to you in the bush when there are lions and the rest? Are we together? So that this immediately should damage any sense of self-righteousness, of believing, oh, I think I'm fine. Uh-uh. There are many people, if you are exposed to one-tenth their conditions, you will fall like a pack of cards. Koinonia, are we together? The purified bride. So number one, you must admit and acknowledge that you need help and the mercy of God. It does not matter whether it happened through your carelessness, giving into the flesh. It does not matter whether it's a product of an attack and a spirit. It does not matter whether it has come as a result of foundations and ancestry patterns. Look at our dear sister, the woman who shared this. You see that her legs were broken, same position, same time. The sister, the same thing happening. There are strong demonic patterns. Let me tell you the truth. Except you deal with this by revelation. You can be a man of God. You can be a leader. You can be a father. You can be a businessman. That spirit from its ancestry will haunt you until you use spiritual intelligence to deal with it. Number three, help now. Number one, I said, admit and acknowledge it, your need for help. Number two, you must set out time for a personal retreat. A time of honest appraisal. Flog it out with destiny, with all sincerity between you and God. Number three, where it persists and is still beyond your control, you must seek help. You must seek help. You must be honest enough to seek help. You must seek help. Now, let me pause here for a minute and just comment very quickly. I'm dwelling on this issue of sexual immorality because I just want us to deal with it a little bit before we now discuss the rest. It's a very serious issue. Do you know, please look up, do you know that in seeking help, I submit to you that there are many people who desire to seek help. But the reason is, history has shown that especially we men of God, have not sustained the kind of intelligence and maturity to manage people's private and painful issues. Is that true? There are many people who have been wounded because they came and opened up to their prophet, their man of God, and said, listen, I think there is something I'm struggling with. Prayer partners, accountability partners, mentors, men of God, have in many regards disappointed the trust that people have had for them. That is the reason why you see today, people have resorted to flying abroad and going to go and meet therapists, at least who will deal with it professionally. 
and don't even know you rather than coming to cry to say man of god i think there is a challenge in my life many of us will pray and say oh let's pray father the devil cannot take over this person and later on before evening you have told your wife as a spouse you have told your husband ah this is our prayer group my god god is bringing a lot of deliverance you see the problem now and then the person will tell another person and say don't tell anybody i would deny i don't know you when anything backfires let me tell you the truth it takes more than being anointed to help people you must be trained we must incorporate this in our mentorship platforms as we build people anointing and revelation is not the only thing that qualifies for spiritual leadership people must sustain psychological knowledge the maturity and the know-how to manage sensitive things some of these people are in positions where managing and dealing with these issues can have severe effects on them their organizations their platforms you're a man of God here listening or within this place. We must know that when people open their pain up to you, it is a trust you must protect. Are we learning? But I want to tell you this. Help is powerful. It is amazing how something that looks like a mountain can be deflated in the presence of genuine help. There are people who are carrying spirits. So counseling will not solve the problem. Counseling, you may walk around counseling and say, okay, this positive confession, you will speak that in Jesus' name, I'm okay. And that spirit will just wait at the door of the counseling. As soon as you are coming out, it, before then it has gathered seven others. That's what the Bible says. And it will land on you in a way that you cannot imagine. That's why whether it's sexual immorality or people who are on drugs, when you are talking to them, have you seen how quiet? They will just keep quiet. Will you smoke again? No. Will you drink? No, that's the last time. By evening, do you know how this spirit works? Even if they travel to a region where they don't know anybody, the spirit will coordinate a way. They must know who sells what. It's a spirit. So number one, admit. Number two, a retreat. Set aside time to pray and fast and study scripture. And cry out your heart in genuine brokenness and repentance before God. Number three, if and when the need arises, seek help. Seek help from matured people, your pastor. Seek help from your spiritual father. Seek help from mentors. People who have demonstrated maturity to be able to handle those issues. Number four, very quickly. Key number four is what many people avoid and ignore. And it is the reason why their deliverance is not complete. Number four, create rules and boundaries in and around your life. Create rules and boundaries in and around your life. Proverbs 25 and verse 28, please. 25, 28, Proverbs. He that had no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Create rules. When you enter a relationship with your spouse intended to be, create rules. Agree and pray and say in the name of Jesus Christ, we'll keep this relationship pure up until marriage. Create rules. Don't allow your emotions to suggest from beginning. Settle it that by the grace of God, as God grants mercy, this is how it will be. If you're with me, say amen. amen. You must create rules and you must create boundaries in and around your life. It's not enough to repent before God. It's not enough to now be renewed in your decision. There are systems that you must create, especially for sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is highly atmosphere dependent. You cannot stand and sleep with somebody in front of a police station or in front of a law court. The atmosphere is not right. may be difficult to sleep with somebody when Don Moen is playing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, please write, please write. Let's, let's get to work. There's a lot for us to do. Don't just laugh. I hope he's entering you. Tonight, there is no tell them. God is speaking to all of us. Are we together? Pay attention, please. So, 
the final encouragement for you is connect to a larger family of believers community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values community kingdom living is the key to sustaining kingdom values hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25 amplified please give it to us hebrews 10 25 amplified not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as many believers as is the habit of some people but admonishing warning urging and encouraging one another and all the more faithfully as you see the day approaching it says not forsaking the assembling of believers when you connect to a larger body of believers it can help you preserve your kingdom values are we together yes very very powerful and important so let me run through the step finally that to be free from the spirit of lust sexual immorality masturbation pornography and all kinds of vices whatever it is the first thing is you must admit that there is need for help number two you must be able to set a time of retreat of brokenness repentance before god number three seek help number four you must create rules and boundaries in and around your life and then number five connect to a larger family of believers has god helped someone please lay your hand on your head in one minute and cry to the lord father i obtain mercy preserve me go ahead and pray preserve me preserve me if the message has hit you and perhaps your life has been that way do not be discouraged remember the one who god loves is the one he chastises lord i obtain grace someone is praying i obtain grace deliver me from sexual immorality deliver me from lust for you it may not be sexual immorality but how about lust ungodly thoughts that roam around your mind seeking for an opportunity to be executed you can live and walk in freedom Please pray. You are praying from the depth of your heart. For some of you is drunkenness, alcoholism. Some of you drugs and all kinds of vices. The purified bride must be free from this. Don't say it does not matter. The purified church must obtain grace from God. Please pray. Doesn't matter whether you are a pastor, apostle, prophet. God can give you a new beginning provided your heart is open to cry you are following online you are watching from any nation i like you to pray this is not a message unto condemnation it is a sincere admittance that will lead to purity holiness and lift you to a higher level of spiritual exploits someone is praying lord show me mercy show me mercy show me mercy i cry unto you You may want to extend that prayer to someone you know and love. Lord, show my spouse mercy, probably. Lord, show my husband, my wife. Show my children mercy. Show my parents mercy. Show my pastor mercy. Show my, my, my CEO mercy. Show this politician mercy. It's not a time of condemnation. The fall of one is the fall of all. The rising of one is the rising of all. We are a body that is interested in our corporate growth. I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Pray for everybody you know. Prayer groups, churches, ministries, pastors, leaders, politicians, heads of government. No one, no one is beyond being tempted with sexual immorality. No one is beyond being tempted with other immoral perversions has nothing to do with being good or bad pray that those who are bound by any and all kinds of addictions let it be broken in the name of jesus you are praying for yourself and you are praying for them praying for the body of christ hallelujah in jesus name i pray sin number one that the body of Christ needs to be purified from sexual immorality and related perversions. Sin number two, I'm giving you seven very quick. The second sin that the body of Christ needs to be purified from, indeed the church, 
is lost for money and material things. Please write it down. Lost for money and material things. Philippians chapter 3. Let's hurry up please. From verse 17 to 19. The lost for money and material things. It says, brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have for an example. Uh-huh. I'm trying to make sure that I pull these things. Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 and verse 36. Yes. What shall it profit a man? Is it in your Bible? If he gains the whole world, that's a business terminology, and loses his own soul. This is another cancer that is sweeping the body of Christ. And we need God to show us mercy. We are victims of it as men of God, as churches, as believers. The loss for money and material things. First Timothy chapter 6, please, and verse 6 to 10. Lost for money and material things. First Timothy 6, 6 to 10. But godliness with contentment, the Bible says, is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world. Please look at me. Have you ever seen a naked baby come out of his mother's womb holding dollars or holding gold and say, I came from heaven, leave my thing for me. Everybody comes naked. And have you ever seen a dead man who is departing? And as soon as they are burying him, he just reaches and draws his gold chain to his grave. It does not happen. From birth and at your point of transition, you are empty. This should give us wisdom already. Are we together? Let's finish up that scripture. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Uh huh. And having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. Nine. Watch this. It says, but they that will be rich fall into temptations. I'll explain this for you. And a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. Verse 10. For the love of money, the word there is eros. An ungodly affinity and attachment to money is the foundation of every kind of evil. It is the strengthener. Of all kinds of evil he said which while some coveted after have erred from the faith and have passed themselves through with many sorrows please look up I believe in prosperity it is God's desire to bless his people materialism is not having materials materialism is the influence of materials upon your relationship you see the Bible tells us that God and mammon, this spirit that controls worldly wealth, that it seeks for allegiance. Money does not just want to end up in your pocket. Money wants you to end up in its pocket. Are we together now? Yes. When our entire sermons, our entire lives, our entire conferences, our entire conventions, with all due respect and honor to the body of Christ, when everything becomes about money, you cannot hold an evangelistic crusade and right there before souls come, we're talking about money. There is no business between evangelism and talking about prosperity principles. That should be in a believer's conference. Those who have now been saved, then it is part of the growth process that mentors and builds them. Hallelujah. Some of us here, as you are looking at me, you can kill because of money. Are we together? Yes. Our affinity for money. You can have 10 million in your account. If 10,000 is missing, you can go around, even in the night with torchlight, to sleep and wake up in the morning. You will not wait till it's morning. You must complete that 10 million, 10,000. <laughs> affinity. Material things. This has controlled who and what we marry. This has controlled who and what we get. Money can call you, leave Nigeria and come to UK. Can say, no, 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 go back again. Money controls people around the world like a remote control. Listen, let me tell you the truth. I have taught you on financial principles. It is not sarcasm. God wants to bless us, but not by becoming so emotionally obsessed and attached with money. There are people, the moment they became wealthy, 
they told their wives from today you will not stay with me go out into the other room because i don't trust anybody i've suffered too much listen to me you can be prosperous lay up gold as dust beyond your wildest imagination and yet not be attached to it the goal of bringing this right now is to be able to teach you that god wants you to prosper marketing poverty as a sign of holiness and piety is inaccurate no if poverty were good some of it would be found in heaven and since there is none of it found there it means it did not come from there are we together now so i'm not teaching you from a standpoint of an irresponsible man of god who is unmindful of the reality of the times i understand and there are scriptural strategies and for as long as i live among the many mentorship um, teachings that you will receive is empowerment i am vocal and i am unashamed and unapologetic about the blessing of god's people it's a sermon i will never change till i see his face my assignment is to balance you to see to it that it does not become obsession because we need to balance this for many believers our obsession the reason why we go to church and the entire scope of our christian pursuit is money is the reason why people can steal people can do anything because of money and sadly in many christian circles respectfully speaking the major index for measuring faith is wealth so if your faith is working let me see it by the car you are driving if your faith is working let me see it by the house if the man of god if there's it shouldn't be while we continue to reject poverty we must cry and pray that god will grant us grace even by his mercy to be people who can look at money is the reason why many believers compromise someone will dangle one million and you say ah i rather enjoy it now and tell god sorry later no. the body of christ needs to be delivered from lust for money and material things sin number three is god helping us let me tell you the truth before we go to number three the cure for lust for money and material things is number one to be properly mentored on the kingdom's pathway to wealth and abundance you can do well to listen to my teaching the power to get wealth we have done several teachings along this line you would observe in that teaching that i taught you that the first law the first spiritual law for wealth and abundance is not tithing it is not giving the first law is the law of absolute surrender until you are dead to yourself dead to the flesh and alive unto god your obeying business principles is simply bargain and investment you are doing with god so there are many people who bring tithe and bring offering as a bribe as an exchange god you better see it i'm dropping it and you drop it and go back and say god i'm waiting and god says what do you really love the money or me the law of absolute surrender they gave of themselves first the macedonian church and then they gave of their substance so now number three are we learning the third sin that the bride of christ which is the church of the lord jesus christ must be purged from is the sin of witchcraft and extra biblical practices please write it down this is the third this one is a very serious one is god blessing us already show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus we want to enter deuteronomy chapter 18 let's hurry up from verse 9 the third sin that the body of christ needs to be purified from is the sin of witchcraft 
and extra biblical practices when thou art come into the land which the lord thy god giveth thee reading to 14 it says thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through fire or that useth divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch next verse or a charmer or a consultant with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer verse 12 for all that do these things are an abomination unto the lord and because of these abominations the lord thy god doth drive them out from before thee 13 thou shalt be perfect with the lord thy god in fact we can stop there are we together exodus chapter 13 exodus 13 let's start from verse 1 ezekiel 13 i meant to say Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse 2 Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts, Hear ye the word of the Lord, verse 3. Thus saith the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirits and have seen nothing. Verse 4. O Israel, thy prophets are like foxes in the deserts. Uh -huh. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up for the hedge of the house of Israel to stand in the battle, you know, in the day of the Lord. Verse 6. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord had not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Verse 7, we're reading to 10. Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, the Lord said it, albeit I have not spoken. Verse 8. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore, behold, I am against you, saith the Lord. Verse 9. It says, and my hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity and that divine lies and shall not be in the assembly of my people. Neither shall they be written in the writings of the house of Israel. Neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord thy God. Verse 10. It says, because, even because they have seduced my people saying peace and there was no peace. And one built up a wall, and lo, others have daubed it and on, uh, with untampered mortar. Let's add 11, the last verse. It says, Say unto them which daubed it with untampered mortar, that it shall fall, and shall be an overflowing shower. And you know this and that. He was rending judgment upon them. The prophets that lie. The word prophet there does not just mean prophetic office. It includes any and all men of God and any and all leaders in acts chapter 16 a very popular scripture you know about that from verse 16 the bible talks about a young damsel who had the spirit of divination give us acts 16 16. we're reading to 18 and it came to pass that as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination possessed with what a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by suit saying the same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, Look at the accuracy of her prophecy. These men are the servants of the Most High God. Was it a lie? Which show us the way of salvation. Was it a lie? That was the best summary of the assignment there. And yet the spirit that was behind it was the spirit of divination. The Bible says, And did, did she many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And the spirit came out the same hour. Please look up. Let me tell you the truth. It is no news and it is nothing to shy away from. That not all who name the name of Christ, not all who are involved in ministry and spiritual leadership 
are sincerely from God. There is no need, it is not about prejudice or biases. But let me say this there are people who have mixed the baby and the bath water and call everybody who prophesies, everybody who works miracles, anybody with an unusual manifestation of the grace of God upon his life. It is easy for society to brand you and to say there's something wrong with you. It is amazing how we say we believe in God. It is amazing how we say we believe in all the miracles that happen in the Bible. And yet when they happen here and now, we are afraid of them. It means we never believed it. Are we together? It is no news that many people... Let me tell you this. I teach the school of ministry that when it has to do with purity of vessels, there are three kinds of people. Number one, there are those we call the pure breed. Those who sincerely love God and have worked in keeping with the divine patterns that make for the purity of ministry. They have not soiled their hands with divination or any satanic thing. Number two, there are those who are innocent and sincere. Their call is genuine. But wrong mentorship or pressure or ignorance led them to go and fraternize with groups, associations or mentorship platforms that introduce them. So these are people who are not evil. They are only corrupted. Then the third category are people who from the inception, they were not of God. Are we together now? So it is important to create this divide. Do not watch anybody walking supernaturally in the power of God or prophesying or with an unusual dimension of the operation of the spirit and just brand them and say these are demonic. It is not so. If Jesus were alive and he walked on earth, we would have called him heretic as the scribes did. Are we together? Look at the many things Jesus did. He spat on the ground. Would you sit down for a man of God, even Jesus Christ? What kind of a Jesus who spit on the ground and rub it on your eyes and say, go to a river? It, does that look like compassion? He didn't even lead me there. And yet the Bible says he leads me beside still waters. Now he's sending me and saying, go by yourself. Are we together? Many times we love Jesus just because he's not here. If he comes to the earth, after one week, many of us will be tired and say, go back. We don't understand you again. But I can tell you the truth. By the authority of scripture and the evidences that scripture show, that there are people who have fraternized with all kinds of dark powers and, and demonic things. Now, let me tell you this. Please look up. In the kingdom... It is not all about results. The pathway that leads to that result is how God is glorified, not the result in itself. There is a way you can practice healing, practice deliverance, practice your faith life in a way that it is an extra biblical practice. The believer is bound to the provisions that scripture allows. Are we together now? All things are lawful. But the Bible says all things are not expedient. That means to be a sound man of God. It's not about clamoring for acceptance. But it's important to limit your operation ministerially and in any kind of spiritual leadership to the provisions that the Bible allows. Now, the truth is that if you are a man of the Spirit, you are going to be led of the Spirit. And sometimes you will be led of the Spirit in a way that may be strange to the natural man. I must tell you that. But you see, the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is that the purity of his leadership to you will be known by those, you are, those that you are manifesting. No matter how strange it is, they will have a witness of the Spirit that you are not acting based on the influence of a spirit of divination. For instance, there is no instant maturity in the Bible. People do not become matured instantly. So for you to be greatly used by God, there must be a track record of growth. Even if you are called into the prophetic and the apostolic ministry, there is no instant maturity. Nobody comes out of nowhere. The Bible is full of the pathway for spiritual growth and manifestation. There must be a track record of growth. And Jesus increased, Luke 2.52, in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and with men. 
the way we have marketed ministry especially with the gospel of wealth and abundance unfortunately is what has driven nigeria and even africa into the search especially the apostolic and the prophetic because they seem to look like the most charismatic of the fivefold if i say i am an apostle or a prophet and i prophesy chances are that somebody can give me a car in one day can give me a building in one day are we together someone can come to see me maybe a governor or a president man of god now that is election time should i go and most times the man will not come alone he may come with honorarium to come and, and, and greet the prophet of god and that honorarium can be serious he can carry a man's destiny and give him one day so many people because of that i'm not being sarcastic many people because of that when they fail in every other area of their life they say do you know what this thing i am tired have you noticed that every time there is a corruption in the prophetic the apostolic or spiritual leadership the end result is always money material things fame i want a name i want everybody to know i am the person scene number three witchcraft and extra biblical practices Right for reference, we may not read it for time. Acts chapter 8 from verse 9 down to 23. You want to enjoy the reading? Read from Amplified. There was a sorcerer called Simeon. When, when Philip went down to Samaria, the Bible says, and he preached Christ to them. And the Bible says, they with one accord gave heed, seeing and hearing the miracles which he did. And there was somebody called Simon. He was a sorcerer. The Bible says he, he made a lot of money. In fact, the people captioned him the great power of God. That was a title they gave him because of the level of his spiritual exploits. His ministry ended when the apostles now started coming there. And the Bible says he was convicted genuinely. He went for Philip's crusade. And when Philip preached, listen carefully, the guy was converted. He was even baptized. So when they sent um, James and John now and they went there and he saw that through the laying on of hands he saw another dimension that was not captured in his practice that they just laid hands and people were getting feel. do you know what he did he cornered James and John later or was it Peter and, and, and John now and told them he said please I have money I can give you money let me add to this you see that he was saved but not transformed there are many people who are born again but when the going gets tough, they still attend to all kinds of things. There are believers that still do masquerades. I'm not saying attend the festival. They are the, the, the that, they, they bought the regalia, they have it. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever amen yours is the kingdom yours is the power yours is the glory forever yeshua ha -ha. Yeshua What is the solution to witchcraft and extra biblical practices? Two scriptures very quickly. Second Corinthians chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. Perhaps you are a man of God listening to me. Perhaps you are a young minister who is beginning to start. And your passion, you are driving, you, you want to do this ministry by fire, by force. Let me give you a strong word of advice. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Verse 2. It says, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Give us Hebrews 12 and verse 28. 
So you must renounce the hidden works of dishonesty. The Bible says, wherefore, Hebrews 12, 28, receiving, seeing that, receiving a kingdom, wherefore we, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, it says, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. What then is the cure to witchcraft and extra biblical practices? Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. When you fear God sincerely, you will love his people too much to deceive and manipulate them. When you fear God, you will love his people too much. Are we together? To send them all kinds of text messages with lying prophecies. I saw this about you. Make sure you are in church tomorrow. No, don't do that. Again, remember, do not forget that all we teach is from a standpoint of love and not self-righteousness. No, we are all but products of God's mercy. But the truth must be spoken, even if it is in love. Are we together? Witchcraft. Sin number four, that the church needs to be, are you tired? That the church needs to be purged off. Write it down, please. Pride, vain glory, and self-centeredness. This is the fourth cancer that God wants to take out of the church for her to be a purified church. Sin, vain glory, and self-centeredness. James chapter 4 and verse 6 immediately tells us, James 4 verse 6, that God giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisted the proud. Please shout it. God resisted the proud. One more time, please. It is important for you to know who is going to fight you when you are proud. If it is a demon that fights you, the anointing can help you. But when the owner of the anointing is the one fighting you, will you bring an anointing to fight him? God resisted the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Luke chapter 18, please. From verse 9 to 14. Luke 18 starts with the teaching on prayer. Most times we just read the prayer part and we stop. But here's what the Bible says. He spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves. Are you seeing now? He's talking about those who trust in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Ten. Two men went up into the temple to pray. Jesus is speaking now. One was a Pharisee and one was a publican, an ordinary person. The Pharisee stood up and hear what he prayed. The Bible says he prayed thus with himself. God... I thank thee, this is his praying now, that I am not as the other men are. Does that sound like how we behave in the church? Believers. We stand with self-righteousness, full of ourselves. I thank you because I am not as other men are. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even this publican who is standing by my side. Verse 12. He's praying, you know. Somebody else came to pray. I fast twice in a week. He's reading his credentials before God now. I give tithes of all that I possess. 13. And the publican, what is his business with the publican? That is the character of pride. It never focuses on its own thing. It will have to use a basis to contrast. And the publican standing afar off, look at what he said would not even lift up so much his eyes unto the heavens, but smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Next verse, 14. I tell you, Jesus is speaking now. Jesus assessed two people who went to pray. This man went down to his house justified, the publican, rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, brought low, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted i submit to you sincerely that the body of christ in as much as we have commended a lot of things we must trust god for grace to manage pride among we men of god among members among politicians among successful people pride vain glory and self-centeredness romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 6 god is speaking to us tonight 
I beseech you therefore brethren by the message of God he says to present your bodies unto God as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 it says do not be conformed to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove that which is good and acceptable and perfect will of God now pay attention verse 3 for I say through the grace given me to every man that is among you watch this now it's a warning not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith verse 4 for as ye have many members in the body and he said all members have not the same office that means if you are proud it is because you do not recognize that there are diversities within the body so we being many are one body in christ and everyone members of another verse 6 the last verse now it says having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us whether it is prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith and then it continues like that but he's saying you have to be careful do not exalt yourself in your own eyes more highly listen i learned this about men it is about you but not all about you it's a revelation we must have as leaders as believers when everything becomes about you and it's a mistake we make as men of god we clamor to be the focus and the epicenter of everything self-centeredness is someone learning the scene of pride the scene of vain glory do you know way before the scene of sexual immorality way before the scene of other perversions way before the scene of witchcraft that one scene was the scene of pride and treason satan i will exalt myself above the stars of god so it is an old scene i will be like the most high self-centeredness you must get to a point where you appreciate the fact that you are only one of many as a businessman as a man of god i am only one of many across the body of Christ globally in Africa and in this nation who have obtained mercy by God to make a very meaningful contribution towards kingdom come when I suggest to myself that it is all about me there is trouble is someone learning especially for young ministers who God is helping to come up or younger ministers I would say because we're all young younger ministers who are coming up we have to be careful pride the pulpit should not be a place of pride there's there's too much pride and vainglory and it is because of that that it leads us into all kinds of lies are we together oh i held a meeting and hundred thousand people came to my church and out of them ten thousand people got up on wheelchairs Abba. It's all about you, Jesus, and all this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me, as if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender. Let me tell you the truth. I submit to you, my dear people, the person talking to you has seen the mercy and the glory of God. I'm not speaking in ignorance. I have stood before kings. I have stood before nobles. God has honored me with what many people will not get in many lifetimes. I submit to you. So if there is something to boast about, the person standing before you can beat his chest and we can speak. God has elevated us and honored us and giving us visibility across the globe if there is anything to make noise about we can beat our chest we have stood before kings god has brought kings and heads of governments and leaders to become sons and mentees but we count everything like paul but dung for the excellency of christ so
so by the privilege of God's grace and by the privilege of results I have a right to say what I'm saying when we speak like this we do not speak it is not to downplay or demean what God has made if we begin to read the credentials of our accomplishments and the things that God is doing in and through us across the nations and many of you here koinonia here is is a collection of extremely successful people there are billionaires in this place there are multi-millionaires there are successful people politicians business people heads of conglomerates some of them do not they are not even in this main auditorium they are somewhere scattered in the overflow our global family is full of extremely successful people some of them i do not even know them myself the days I meet them or communicate with them, I am surprised that this is what God has given. It is easy for me to stand and beat my chest. And if anyone talks, I say, see my result. Bring your own first before you talk. But we count this boss dung. God has lifted us to be able to, by the privilege of God's grace, use our life to help mentor nations. That when God lifts you, your assignment is to be as an usher to lift him. And forever for as long as we live, it will always be Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Amen. Jesus revealed and Jesus glorified. Acknowledge the truth and what God is doing in your life, but be careful. Pride and vain glory. When it becomes all about Joshua Selman, there is trouble. Are we together? Because that means all the people who I teach and mentor and raise will have to follow that template. And it's going to be a, a, the extended consequence is the body of Christ will have a lot of problems. I pray and look forward to times when successful people will come together and roll on the ground before the nations and say, we are doing this for you, Jesus. And like Paul, like, uh, like um, um, it, was, it was David, huh? Who was returning back the, the ark was being taken back and he was dancing in an undignified manner and Saul's daughter looked at him and said, look what you are doing. You are bringing shame to yourself. Why are you doing this? He said, I'm dancing before the God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. God had her and she died barren. Hallelujah. When I hear and see the mighty things that God is doing in and through our lives, you know, sometimes I just stand before the mirror and I say, Lord, please show mercy. Show mercy that by your spirit, we never get to a point where the applauds of men. Now, people will clap. People will sincerely appreciate. There is a difference between simplicity and humility. You can be a simple person and still be proud. Are we together now? Yes. We are talking about a recognition where the nations will know that Jesus Christ is the one who has done this but the spirit of pride also let me tell you the character of pride it downplays the contribution of others and desires for you to stand out that is what that is the problem so when you look at koinonia all you see is joshua selman and you do not see the people who are making this happen and if for any reason you want to even if it's a little pat on the back i create systems that prohibit them why are you clapping for the guy playing keyboard can he do Bible study like me? How many verses has he given you? So the center, sometimes we do it unconsciously, but it is a sin that the body must be purged from. If we are together, say amen. amen. What is the cure for pride and vainglory? It's found in John chapter 3 from verse 22 to 30. John 3, 22 to 30. After these things, Jesus came to Judea and the Bible says he tarried and was about to be baptized. Let's read very quickly. The Bible says John was also baptizing. Watch this now. John was baptizing near Salim because there was much water there and people came and were being baptized. Watch what happened now. For John was not yet cast into prison. You know, I used to think John stopped baptism after he announced Jesus. But I got to find out that he continued his thing. And there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying, 26. And they came to John and said, Rabbi, he that was with you beyond the Jordan, whom thou bearest witness, behold, 
the same has started baptizing too. And all men are coming to him. That was a problem. And John answered and said, the answer of John must become our disposition. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. 28. It says, ye yourself bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but I am sent before him. 29. He that had the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom which standeth and heareth him rejoiced greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, is therefore fulfilled. Verse 30, he must increase and I must decrease. Notice he never said I must vanish. No, I must decrease so that he will be seen. It is my prayer, first for myself as I'm preaching here, that when people look at me, they would not just see a celebrity or see whatever it is, but they will see Christ crucified and Christ glorified through a privileged vessel. That is the greatest testimony that I desire. Sin number five. The fifth sin that the body of Christ needs to be purified of is called the sin of the tongue. Please write it down. We're wrapping up. The sin of the tongue. This includes everything that can affect and destroy and corrupt the body that comes through the tongue. Lying, gossip, backbiting, sowing seeds of discord. They are all called the sins of the tongue. Are you seeing how God is helping us now? So that as God is running the list, at the end of this list, if you stand and beat your chest and say, I am fine, your sin is this one. Are we together? Proverbs 34, 12 to 13. Proverbs 34. Pro, uh, Psalms 34, sorry. Psalms 34, 12 and 13. Psalms 34, 12 and 13. Let's finish so, so we can pray. It says, What man is he that desired life and loveth many days that he might see good? What is that man? What does he need to do? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking guile. The word guile there is lies and deception. Proverbs chapter 6 from verse 16. The six things that the Lord hates. 6, 16. These six things does the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Let's read the list to 19. A proud look, number one. A lying tongue. Number three, hands that shed innocent blood. Number four, a heart that devised wicked imaginations. Number five, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Number, nine, number six now, verse 19, a false witness that speaketh lies. And then finally, he that soweth discord among brethren. The sin of the tongue. Can I tell you the truth? There are many people today who have allowed the devil to use their tongues to divide the body of Christ, cause trouble the body of Christ. There are many believers from men of God to churches to several people. Who they, they are the way they are and the body has been corrupted this much because of the sin of the tongue. From gossiping to lying to devising wicked imaginations because the mouth is a testimony of the state of the heart. Are we together now? The worst one here is he that soweth discord among brethren. There are people today who cannot serve God acceptably because people creep into churches, creep into families, creep into prayer platforms and so seeds. Now I submit to you that there is no church globally that is immune from this. You will always have people who will sow seeds of discord. There are many homes today, Christian homes and marriages that are in disarray simply because there are people who sow seeds of discord. Ah, daddy, I need to tell you something. I saw mommy preparing your food and after she finished, she held something that was looking like Maggie. But it was the way she was sprinkling the thing. And the man, they brings the food to the man and the man says, no, no, I'm okay. What happened? Mm -mm, I'm okay. 
and then comes to the woman and says i saw daddy he was writing something a check and i think i saw him giving one woman or something and the woman said okay me too i'm going to my father's house and the person who did it will keep quiet and stand somewhere there are many people joining the heads of sincere people and join this they say this to this they say this to that and they stand back and watch with joy no it ought not to be so it is a spirit and it is not tell them god is telling all of us are we together now yes seeds of discord how about lying there are people that lie like word of knowledge you know no rehearsal you just lie from preachers to business people anything they are telling you just know that you are hearing a lie even when they are crying it's still a lie i'm sure there are i'm sure there are judges who already know this as soon as they enter they just allow them to talk for formality after that they say please go to prison we already know that you are the thing is written from head to toe even as men of god god needs to show us mercy we are doing our best but all these lies exaggerations lies years ago in the seminary they thought that there was something called white lie you know and all of those kinds of things lie is lie just need mercy at the end of this teaching all of us will need the blood of jesus that is the summary of it at the end of this teaching all of us are going to need the blood of jesus praise the name of the lord a lying tongue let me what is the solution i'll just give you two scriptures and then psalms 19 and verse 4 psalms 19 and verse 4 what is the solution to a lying tongue did i get that right my goodness i keep i think my give us psalm 141 verse 3 and 4 psalm 141 3 and 4 it said set a watch O lord before my mouth and keep the door of my lips verse 4 incline not thy heart to any evil thing to practice wickedness with men that work iniquity and let me not eat of their dainties so he says set a guard over my mouth you see the beautiful thing is that you must not talk hear in your mind what you want to say first and find out is it edifying Ephesians chapter 4 I believe verse 29 Ephesians 4 and 29 let no corrupt communication proceed from your mouth is that in your Bible but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers that means if you are opening your mouth to speak and it is going to be gossip by biting tearing down people he's saying let no corrupt communication proceed from your mouth make sure that that which comes out is that which will edify it will minister grace to the hearers if you are with me say amen, amen. number six scene number six that the lord god of heaven demands that his bride the church be purified from the church global the church in africa and the church in nigeria is competition an unhealthy comparison competition an unhealthy comparison this is the sixth scene unhealthy comparison of men unhealthy comparison of structures competition an unhealthy comparison this has produced all kinds of unhealthy camps cabals do you know it is one of the plagues that has destroyed africa and even nigeria there are circles people have it has almost become like cult-like circles there are healthy circles that make for the preservation of convictions but there are people who have stretched it if you do not belong to certain cabals ministerial cabals it has almost become cult-like and sadly but respectfully this is even more pronounced in many parts of africa you see this happen so younger ministers who are clamoring for attention and visibility have to bend their standard because the requirement is until you weave yourself into certain cabals don't get me wrong i've told you community living is the key to preserving kingdom values and having having a good network of like-minded kingdom people with similar convictions is very biblical in fact if you don't have it 
then you will not have the grace to, sus to be sustained and to stay. You can't, just because I teach about this, it does not mean that you open up your heart to everything. I love the body of Christ, but I have my convictions and my values. There are groups, respectfully speaking, and associations that you would never see me part of, not at that current template. You will not see me as part of them because I love the Lord and I hold true the convictions that I have for him. Are we together? You will never, for instance, see me bring somebody here and I tell the person, your primary assignment to come here is to come and raise money. I'm not saying raising money is wrong, but for the purpose of deception, prophesy, manipulate the people, raise the money, and then we split it, maybe 50-50. If he doesn't agree, we do 64. No, those kind of things. No, it shouldn't be. Again, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm just being truthful because it happens. And then competition. Competition is a dangerous spirit. It should not be. Not in the body of Christ. Are we together? Second, Chronic, Second Corinthians 10 from verse 12. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 12. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves with themselves and comparing themselves among themselves. The Bible says are not wise. Next verse. The Bible says, but we will not boast of things without our measure or outside of our measure. You want to understand this, you have to look at it from Amplified. Give us Amplified. Amplified, and then we'll read from there. It says, We, on the other hand, will not boast beyond our legitimate province and proper limit, but we will keep within the limits of our commission, which God has allotted us by the measuring line, which reaches and includes even you. Are we together now? Yes. 14. It says, for we are not overstepping the limits of our province and stretching beyond our ability to reach as though we reached not and had no legitimate mission to you. For we were the very first to come to you, even as far to you with the good news of the gospel of Christ. Reading to 18. Next verse, please. We do not boast, therefore, beyond our proper limit over other men's labor, but we have the hope and confident expectation that as your faith continues to grow, our field among you will be greatly enlarged, still within the limits of our commission. Just read the remaining down to 18. He's trying to say that, listen, we are not here in competition. God has given us jurisdiction and we respect it. And if for any reason we boast, we do it within our predefined jurisdiction. Are we together? It is an attitude that we must carry as men of God, as business people, within the body of Christ. Competition and unhealthy comparison, it must be avoided. We must run away from it. We must never allow ourselves to be victims of it. I have taught you here in Koinonia that more than Koinonia, our assignment is the body of Christ. I have taught you that are we together? If I stop you and I rob you from enjoying the diversity of the body simply because of me, I would have cheated you because it is not everything you need that God gave me. As much as I love you, there are things that are needed in your life that is not within the scope of my grace or assignment. That is where other members of the body come. Are we together now? They can supply to you dimensions that I may not be able to supply or to the degree they supply. Recognizing that gives you a sense of appreciation for what God is doing across the body. Believing that Koinonia is the only ministry making impact. Believing that Joshua Selman is the only man of God making his deception. I've told you that most of these things come from our backgrounds. We come from Africa, a background of deprivation. So when God begins to use us, the backlog of some of these things, the appetite to outshine. You know, I travel a lot and when I travel across regions, sometimes they are very excited that I'm coming. There are nations that I'm coming to now and you can't imagine the excitement that is happening. But I am very quick to let the men of God, the leaders, the captains of industry know there that 
is not a celebrity that is coming it is an ambassador and i am coming as a contributor to what god is already doing i'm not coming to outshine and downplay and rubbish other men of god rubbish other ministries and make it look like nobody is doing anything serious except me i will be in deception because god is an indictment on the ministry of the holy spirit to believe you are the only one who is effective the moment you think it is, if I ever believe that Koinonia is the only ministry making impact, Joshua Selman is the, I'm insulting the ministry of the Holy Spirit because I'm saying he's so ineffective, he cannot guarantee the stability of other structures. Politicians, never believe you are the only one. Let's not make the mistake of Elijah. Elijah said, and I, I am the only one. Who is standing? It was a mistake. Oh, there are men who... Oh. Do you know, in my life as a man of God, I have met some people, some of them young people, and I have conversed with them. And the kind of presence and power... They are, they've not even started ministry as we know. Some of them do not even know how anointed they are. It's you by the privilege of growth who can taste it and you can say that, ah, there is grace here. There are greater men that are coming who will do greater things than the Joshua Selmans. We better respect them in advance because by the time you tear down people and they rise. No. We are surrounded by many. We are not the only ones who walk this river. They gave us the baton and God is still training many. There are many young people in villages God is training. There are many young people around God. There are many women of fire and power. There are intercessors. There are end time prophets. There are apostles. Some of you are looking at me. I know you are sitting quietly, but there is what God is doing. As men of God, we must be honest to appreciate and recognize. And drop away this celebrity mindset. No, God is bigger than just one man. God is bigger than just one ministry. No matter how effective you are, you cannot capture the entirety of what God is doing. Listen very carefully and learn. I'm not ashamed to appreciate what God is doing across every church with men of God, with people when I have the opportunity of meeting pastors, whether they feel we are greater, we may not be at the same level in grace, but it does not matter. From the least to the greatest, we are all an army who are, who are advancing the purposes of the kingdom. From the least contributor to the greater, we are all deserving of honor. The spirit that rubbishes the contributions of others and makes it look like only few people. A man of God met me one time and we we're talking. And he said, Kai, there are only few of me now, Joshua Selman, that God is using in Nigeria. I told him, keep quiet and don't allow that blasphemy come out of your mouth. There are people in regions and villages we don't even have the kind of anointing to fight those demons there. There are women who did not go to school, but they are in the spirit of Anna the prophetess, fighting battles that we do not know. No protocol protecting them. How dare you believe Joshua Selman is the only one how dare you believe only koinonia what about other men of god what about other apostles what about other churches everybody is making an active contribution if i travel to lagos or to abuja or to any nation the reason why you find believers there is because there was a man of god there mentoring and building them before we arrive we must cultivate a healthy respect. Competition. An unhealthy comparison. And let me charge you my precious people. Don't go around joining the heads of men of God. Don't go around joining the heads of people by trying to compare. Oh, this one is this, this one is that. No, no. That is not your assignment. Hallelujah. I once met a woman with a unique grace for barrenness. She may not be able to prophesy, but if she lays her hands on you, I had the privilege of praying over one of the, the biggest prayer mountains that I know 
in this nation is led off by a woman very humble woman the first time that woman came to me she came for prayers when she began to tell me and i saw what god did in her life i felt it was me that needed to kneel down let her pray for me she's she's dedicated it now it's a mighty revival center you go there and see prayer cells like it was in the days of Yongicho. we have not come near these things where then is our pride there are people changing the world just because they are not on social media just because they are not invited to the places we may look like the celebrities will make no mistake god has a robust army and there are still many rising hey, 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 hey. look up let me remind you again some of you here are leaders of small prayer groups you are starting don't be discouraged don't allow us men of God discourage you you will make mistakes it is better to make mistake in our presence let's see and correct you in our lifetime than to rubbish what was done but do not be discouraged you will make mistakes let God help you and we will help you by the grace of God are we together Sometimes I see different groups, ministry groups, they come together and they just want to come and greet me for prayer. And you look at them, they may not be dressing well, but they are zealous people. They may not know much, but their hearts are there. How dare you push them? How were we when God started with us? You think we were like this? No, nobody can ever be perfect enough for God's use. You are built while you are going. There is a threshold level of training but when you get there, he begins to use you while the transformation continues. Let's give younger people a chance to grow and make mistakes and learn and grow and build. Our job is to guide, not stop. Are we together? There are many dreams and visions that have been buried because of this competition. Joshua Selman. If you must grow spiritually, it must be through me. That is absolute nonsense. Christ is the head of the church. If I die today, God forbid, you will try to raise me back to life. If I don't wake up, what will you do? You will dig the ground and throw me there. But the program of God continues. Listen to me. The program of God was there before I was born. Some of us are still children compared to what God did before. Pastor, you can be as mighty as you want to be. Prophetess, man of God, woman of God, no matter how young or old, I'm bringing you a word. Don't despise what God is doing. Respect Joshua Selman and every other man of God. Respect the fathers of faith, but please not to the detriment of what God is doing in your life. Do not over honor us to the point where it looks like God has stopped raising men. No. I know we enjoy it because it seems to massage our ego but I'm telling you the truth something is wrong hmm. number seven the fourth sin the seventh sin that the body of Christ needs to be purged of is the sin of imbalance this is the last one and we pray the seventh sin it is not only an error it is sin what is imbalance failure to embrace and communicate the whole counsel of God Acts chapter 20 please give us verse 27 and 28 Acts chapter 20 from verse 27 to 28 
for I have not shown to declare unto you all the counsel of God is that in your Bible Paul is saying I stand by God I did not I did not trivialize any dimension he says take heed therefore unto yourselves he's charging them now and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood please look up imbalance is where there is an exaggeration and the stretching of a dimension of kingdom truth beyond its jurisdiction of relevance you want to understand imbalance you have to study cooking in making a meal it's not the same quantity of rice that you will have for salt is that true for a plate of rice you may need a pinch or two pinches of salt and that is enough by the time you have one mudu of rice and one mudu of salt and join them together what have you done the ingredients are there but not to that degree or by the time you cook a nice delicious rice and then you ignore salt imbalance it is the reason why believers in our world today have not been able to rise to that stature remember the bible says we are kings and priests i submit to you that the church in africa has emphasized on the priesthood dimension we have done well in terms of prayer consecration like i'm doing so the average believer in nigeria and africa is not naive as to their spiritual development that priesthood part we have gotten it well but the kingly part there is a lot of ignorance among believers that is the reason why we cannot dominate the mountains and bring glory to the lord that is why believers can be praying in tongues while politically and sociologically we become victims of situations and circumstances this was the problem between Cain and Abel if you study the Bible Abel understood priesthood but Cain built a city and named it after his son are we together now notice that every time in the Bible you see the building of cities it was the spirit of the Antichrist most believers stopped at just understanding priesthood Jesus, when he came, he began to teach and say, listen, I am sending you as sheep among wolves. The average believer is ignorant as how to bring the kingdom of God, the kingdom come project. We have no idea. Ask the average believer, what do we do as far as establishing the program of God? The only thing they will tell you is let's pray, let's study the scripture, let's live a holy life. And that is wonderful. That is priesthood. But the Bible says we have been made unto our God, kings and priests. If you are a priest alone, you will do well behind the veil. But if you come into the cosmos, you will not be able to thrive. The whole counsel of God. There is holiness and consecration like you are receiving tonight. There is the revelation of God's word. There is the prayer ministry. There is a place for system building and leadership. There is a place for intelligence, knowing how to occupy the secular space. I don't have time. I would have shown you from scripture how Israel became a great nation. Israel did not become a great nation just by priesthood alone. Uh -uh. Are we together? they were in egypt they did not abort their priesthood but they did not understand the kingly dimension and so they remained slaves so we have many believers who are sincere but they cannot pay the school fees of their children we have many believers who are sincere but they cannot access finances to build the building no the whole council of god the lack of it is what has created the lopsidedness in the church of God. So I can stand right now as a man of God. And because I'm preaching, you are coming to bless me. The name of what I'm doing is value. Even if it is spiritual, it is still the law of value. And because I am dispensing value, whether I am selling it or giving it free, the law demands that there will be a reward. So you come and honor me. But what of you? If I do not empower you, how will I ask you to give? It is fraudulent to not empower you and equip you with the truths of the gospel and then keep demanding from you. I will never be a man of God 
that will exaggerate a dimension of kingdom growth at the expense of others let me show you something we're wrapping up are you learning one scripture and then we begin to pray goodness Acts chapter 18 from verse 24 to 26 the Bible talked about a certain Jew named Apollos the Bible says he was born at Alexandria an eloquent man notice this man's credentials an eloquent man mighty in scriptures he came to Ephesus verse 25 this man was instructed in the way of the Lord so he was not a rebel he was mentored being fervent in spirit he spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord but his only problem was he knew only how many of us preach very well but we know only how many of us do business very well but we know only respectfully speaking there are some of us men of God we are fervent like this but we know only administration we know only financial principles and stopping there is imbalance there are some of us who know only priesthood principles of prayer fasting consecration and the word of God some of us only we understand spiritual growth and the rest some of us only we know government when everybody brings their only and we embrace it it will now bring completion are we together now if I begin to teach you only business only financial principles and your spiritual life is going down while you are prospering that is imbalance you may be rich but you will go to hell it will destroy you can I tell you this we must stop criticizing dimensions that we do not understand or are not captured within the frame of our training my job as a man of God is to be efficient as far as the dimension of the kingdom committed to me is concerned but to have a healthy appreciation knowing that I know only no matter how much I know I know only that limitation was brought about by God himself so that we will embrace the entirety of the body so when I teach about the body of Christ I teach about the fact that God has invested diversities of graces it is not everything that I know and have today and that you are receiving that came from the core of my call there are many dimensions that were not captured in my training I how to outsource them through honor to other vessels within the body are we together let's wrap up Revelation chapter 21 we'll read verse 9 to 11 and then 16 and then we'll tie up tonight's teaching goodness there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plague watch this now and talked with me saying come up hither and I will show you the bride the lamb's wife he's about to show us the lamb's wife now verse 10 and he carried me away into the spirit and showed me a great and high mountain and showed me a great city so the lamb's wife is that city the holy jerusalem descending out of heaven from god verse 11 having the glory of god and her light was like unto the stone most precious even like a jasper stone clear and crystal verse 16 look at the lamb's wife the lamb's wife that city had it lieth four square and the length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city with a reed 12,000 furlongs and the Bible says the length and the breadth and the height are what that balanced city is the lamb's wife no dimension was exaggerated before another the length is the same as the height the length is the same as the breadth when that bride becomes a balanced bride embracing all that dimension indeed she's now the lamb's wife the conclusion at the end of this teaching tonight there will be two groups classically one group but for the discussion two groups number one those who may have been victims of many or all 
these things that have been mentioned and for you i have a word first john 2 1 and 2 first john 2 1 and 2 this is a word of encouragement as we conclude my little children these things i write unto you that ye sin not for if any man sin he gives you a word of hope that we have an advocate with the father even jesus the righteous verse 2 it says for he is the propitiation for our sins and not for us only but the sins of the whole world isaiah 55 from verse 6 to 7 this is the word of hope for the first group that might be here 55 6 and 7 isaiah seek ye the lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near verse 7 let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts he says let him return unto the lord and he will have mercy upon him and our god and to our god for he will abundantly pardon so tonight is not for you to be discouraged tonight is for you to know that the mercy of god is still available god is exposing this so that his bride will be and remain purified for the second group there may be people who by the mercies of God are standing. Standing in many and most of this. For you I have a word of encouragement as we wrap up. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 from verse 11 and 12. 1 Corinthians 10, 11 and 12. It says, now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the end of the world has come. Verse 12. It says, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he falls. For those who have who God has help, it is not for you to be judgmental and to point hands at people. It is to take heed while you stand, lest you fall. The final scripture, 2 Corinthians 1, from verse 3 and 4. We're about to pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. It said, blessed be God. Even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Verse 4. He said, who comforted us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. The reason why God comforted you is so that you can have the strength, the stamina, the experience to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Tonight, God has commended us as the body of Christ, but his refining fire has come to us, teaching us seven deadly sins that we must obtain grace this is true for me this is true for you this is true for all of us the intention is that we become a bride purified a church purified i believe in the prophetic destiny of the church in nigeria i believe in the prophetic destiny of the church in africa in spite of all of the decadence and all the things that may be happening a mix of strength and weaknesses a mix of crowns and pains i have one word for you christ is still the head of his church and i want to tell you at the end of it it is victory at the end of it it is grace rise upon your feet as we pray only yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end.
Now listen, I know that our time is gone, but I'm going to give everyone two minutes. No prayer point is between you and the God of your salvation. I read the list for you. You know where it affects you. Forget about the body of Christ and focus on yourself. Forget about them and think about me. In one minute, can you lift your voice and cry? Be merciful unto me, O God, according to your loving kindness. Go and pray. Please pray. Pray while I read the list for you again. For you in one minute, it may be sexual immorality and related perversions. Number two, it may be loss for money and material things, an obsession for it. It may be the practice of witchcraft and extra biblical practices. It may be pride, vain glory, and self centeredness. For you, it may be the sin of the tongue. You have brought pain to several people by your speakings. For someone, it may be competition and unhealthy comparison. And yet, for another, and even for many, it may be trivializing and refusing to embrace the whole counsel of God. It doesn't matter where. I'd like you to pray. Go ahead and cry to the Lord. One minute, please pray. Is someone praying? I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. You're the King of kings and Lord of lords. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. Your glorious majesty. Mercy, O oh God, upon my life. Pray for your children. Pray for your spouse. Pray for Koinonia. Pray for Joshua Selman. Pray for every man of God you know and love. Pray for the body of Christ. We stand as responsible people and we cry to the God who shows mercy. We desire to be that purified bride, that purified church. Shalina Sabahaska Brandigebelekusiata. hallelujah hallelujah now you are here and you want to make it right with jesus there is no point coming here and hearing this kind of teaching tonight his word has come as a refiner's fire and you're saying apostle thank you this is what god has been trying to tell me finally he has spoken to me you know that you need to make that decision for jesus genuinely listen to me Anyone who does not have his spirit, the Bible says he is none of his. And while we do not condemn, we pray that God will touch your heart. I'm going to make an altar call for two people in one. Let's minimize movement, please. Number one, someone who is saying, Apostle, I need Jesus. Hearing you speak, I know that I need to make that decision. Perhaps you are here and you have never truly made that decision for Jesus. You may have been going to churches, hearing men of God, even inviting others. Remember what I started with, that Jesus is coming soon. He truly is coming. And he's coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. Number two, there are those who are saying, Apostle, in light of what you have said now, I need Jesus. I need to make it afresh. I know that it may have been decades of walking or living in sin, but Jesus wants to give you a new beginning wherever you are i'm going to count one to five i want you to come please one i once was lost but now i'm found was blind but now i see 
two. If you are coming, please rush. Please rush. Don't sit back when you know the Holy Spirit is telling you, come and stand right here. Three. I Koinonia, let's encourage them as they come. But now I'm found. Was blind. Please come. I need you. Oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come. come don't mind the voice of condemnation don't mind the voice of your yesterday no for as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away don't say people see me don't worry about them this is between you and Jesus in Jesus name Please look at me. My brothers and my sisters, thank you for the courage. Some of you are crying. Hmm. You see, when he comes as a refiner's fire, it is because he's giving us a new beginning. Are we together? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. I salute you for the courage those who are here, those who are making this decision right from your home, following by television, or following as a rebroadcast. Probably somebody is listening to this, who may be listening to this, many weeks and months and years to come. Perhaps in a retreat, you might be quiet with your maker, flogging it out with destiny. Find hope. The mercy of God is still intact. He renews it every morning. That is how far his loving kindness can reach. Lift your right hand. And I want you to say this after me. Let it be from the depth of your heart. You are not reciting a poem. You are before Jesus, the lover and the maker of your soul. Say, love Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I love you with all my heart. I have come to you just as I am. I want you to help me. I want you to make me. I receive Jesus into my heart. As my Lord and Savior, I declare that from tonight, the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. I declare that I am a child of God. I am a recipient of eternal life. And from tonight, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the abundance of your grace and your mercy. These ones have come making this decision. Lord, I declare by the authority of scripture, their sins are forgiven and that you give them a new beginning in the name of Jesus. I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that this will be the beginning of new seasons in your life. You go from glory to glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please follow our counselors by your right. Every one of you, God bless you. They will have a word with you very quickly and you'll be back to your seat. Let's honor them as we go, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Now, please, if you are sitting, I want you to stand. I want us to hold hands together in one minute and pray for the body of Christ. Pray for Koinonia. Pray for Joshua Selman. Pray for every man of God you know, whether a father whether our generation of ministers, whether the younger ones coming, whether the ones in training, I'd like us to pray as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, putting aside every prejudice of denomination, every prejudice of whatever, mm -mm, we are going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, your church will stand the end of time, the test of time. 
pray for every man of God pray for every politician pray for every captain of industry who names the name of the Lord pray for every professional pray for every family I'd like you to pray lift your voice and pray particularly for us men of God particularly for us men of God pray for every church you know Lord grant grace we cry and we pray mercy we, we pray and we cry that you continually show us mercy. Is someone praying? Pray for the church. We pray for the church in the north. We pray for the church in the south. We pray for the church in the east. We pray for the church in the west. We pray for Christian politicians. We pray for Christian businessmen. We pray for Christian ambassadors. We pray for Christian homes. We pray for Christian children. We pray for Christian institutions. In the name of Jesus, may we indeed be that purified bride. We pray for mercy, lest judgment comes upon us. We pray for mercy in the name of Jesus. Help those who are wounded. Help those who are fallen. Help those who are broken. Give them a chance to rise again. In the name of Jesus, strengthen those who are standing, that they continue to stand through the years. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, now pray for Koinonia. Father, in the name of Jesus, the grace to stand the test of time. The grace to continually communicate your truth with fire. The grace to lead people to Jesus. The grace to do our best as far as the mandate given to us is concerned. Pray for any man of God you know who is wounded. Pray for those who have fallen. Pray for those who are going through all kinds of things right now. Lord, the grace to be able to flog it out with destiny so that they rise back as champions and that in the name of Jesus, we pray that the body of Christ will not lose any precious vessel in the name of Jesus. We pray for mercy. Pray for those who are already doomed for judgment. In the name of Jesus, we intercede as watchmen. Lord, let mercy speak. In the name of Jesus, let mercy speak. For in Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. You have helped us. You have chastised us. You have commended us. You have pruned us. To the end that we be people of stature. To the end that we be people of balance. Indeed, to the end that we be your purified church. Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for myself. I pray for koinonia. I pray for every man of God that our faith can extend to. We pray for every church, every apostolic, every prophetic platform, every man who ministers the name of Christ in Nigeria, in Africa, across the world. Lord, we pray for those who are already in deviation by the Spirit of God. Bring them back to alignment. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who are standing. Lord, grant the humility and the grace to continue to stand. In the name of Jesus, we pray for anyone who is doomed for judgment, that the judgment of God is already hovering around their life. We pray in the name of Jesus, by your mercy, you will restrain your hand. In the name of Jesus, we pray for every man of God, every church, every businessman, every politician, everyone in the body that names the name of Christ, who Satan has or is taking advantage of or plotting their downfall or destruction. In the name of Jesus, their plans will fail. Amen. By the power of the Holy Ghost, we declare that the church is standing strong. Our homes are standing strong. Every man of God is standing strong. Every denomination is standing strong. Every Christian family is standing strong. Every Christian politician is standing strong. Every Christian professional is standing strong. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for the privilege of learning. Let your word build us. We thank you. We receive it as the chastisement of the Lord. And by it we are built by it we are furnished, by it we are established to the glory and the praise of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Let me encourage you to please go back and listen to this teaching again 
and as much as possible, please help someone with it. Hallelujah. Help someone with it. You can use it for your retreat and the Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Amen and amen. God bless you and see you next week.